Did you know that your birth month can actually have an effect on which career path you choose? January babies have this mindset that they're natural born leaders, so they tend to do well in jobs where they're in charge or have high prestige, the most popular of which are general practitioners and debt collectors. People born in February are creative and unconventional, which means that they have a hard time with that nine to five job, which is why a surprisingly high amount of you guys become artists. But if you're born in February and you're not that artistic, you could become a traffic cop. There's a lot of you guys. It's a little weird. March babies do best when they have a career that can entertain people. This is why a lot of you guys become musicians. But you also have the highest number of airplane pilots. Maybe it's the intercom and the cheesy jokes before the flight. Where are my April babies at? I fucking love you guys. We are the most ambitious and career driven. We're the actual natural born leaders. Even though we have the most alcoholics, we have the most politicians, and we tend to do well in whatever the fuck we choose. I ran out of time, so like and follow for a part two. Do you guys know that feeling whenever you rub on your eyes and you see all those like weird colors and shapes? Have you ever wondered why that happens or what that is? Well, I did, and it's a phenomenon called phosphine. So basically, your eyes don't know how to take in information that isn't visual. So whenever you push on them, you're stimulating all the rods and cones in your eyes with physical pressure. And then your eyes try to process that as something they're seeing because that's all they know how to do. The more you know. Things that are way newer than you probably expected. The idea that Republican states are red and Democrat states are blue really only started in the year 2000. Before that, it was more random and the more liberal person usually got red. The high five was invented in 1977 by a gay baseball player who was uncomfortable with ass slaps. George Washington grew up in a world without knowing that dinosaurs ever existed, and the commonly accepted theory that dinosaurs were killed off by a meteor didn't get first theorized until 1980. You can actually go back and watch Disney's Fantasia, which came out in the 40s, and they show the dinosaurs being killed off by earthquakes. So if you're ever thinking about, like, hitting up your ex or sending that risky text to that person you have a crush on, rub one out first, you know, choke the chicken, sauce the taco, and then reread what you wrote and see how you feel because post-nut clarity is real and it'll save you from so much embarrassment. This is season two, part two of what your birth month actually says about you as a person according to science. May babies, I gave you a really bad trait in the first season, so this time I was like, okay, I'm gonna give them a good one, but I could really only find that you guys are gonna start puberty earlier, which means you'll end it earlier, so... June babies are predisposed to moodiness, which means that their mood swings are intense. And I can actually speak to this one because my sister, the only one born in June, I love you, but you can be really mean when you wanna be. Kids born in July, for whatever reason, are the least likely to develop psychotic disorders like schizophrenia. Due to the amount of sunlight and vitamin D that August baby's moms got over the summer, they are more likely to be bigger, taller, and stronger than the rest of us. Guys, I got a box, a gay TikTok box. <gasps> it's full of paper. Wait, no, just kidding. There's stuff under the paper. This is seriously the coolest thing ever. Like, oh my God, dude. Does it look like I'm celebrating pride yet? Because I now feel and smell pretty gay. Really weird human body facts that I can guarantee you didn't know. If for some reason you were to fart consistently for six years and nine months, there would be enough energy built up to create an atomic bomb. If you're ever looking for your car in like a really big parking lot, you can actually take your keys and press the button under your head and it'll increase the radio signal's range because your brain acts as a radio transmitter. The average person has 5.5 quarts of blood in their body and 90% of your blood is water, meaning it would only take two and a half flavor packets to turn all of your blood into Kool-Aid. So I always wear my hair like this and everybody always complains like, oh my God, Jayus, why do you wear your hair like that? It's always on one side. And you know what? I hear you, I listen. So I got my girlfriend here to help me try some different hairstyles and you guys are gonna tell me which ones you guys like. Pigtails are just gonna be a hard no for me. I, I look like Princess Leia. Got a high ponytail. We got uh, some braids now. <laughs> Kinda shows off my undercut pretty well. Got the very highly requested middle part. I don't wear hats, but like, I could wear hats. The slick back matrix look is also another hard no for me. Oh my God, straight chase is back now. Let me know what you like. <laughs> It's possible that the first radio waves powerful enough to make it into outer space were transmitted in 1936 in the Berlin Olympics by Hitler. So this means that the first voices that aliens may hear are Hitler's, which probably explains why they haven't tried to contact us back. Mars has the tallest mountain in the entire solar system. It's 72,000 feet high compared to Mount Everest, which is only 29,000 feet high. And its slope is actually really shallow. And the top of it is in space. So you can technically on Mars 
walk up a mountain into space. There's a body of water out there floating in space that's so gigantic that you can give everybody on the planet 20,000 bodies of water, each the size of Earth. Psychology tricks that I learned in my general psych class last year that I know work because I use them. People tend to get really uncomfortable in silence and they subconsciously try to fill this by talking. This works especially well if you're in a verbal altercation with somebody and they're kind of being an ass. Just don't say anything. Let themselves dig a deeper hole and listen to the word vomit spew out of their mouth. You can tell which one of your friends likes who by just paying attention a little bit more. If you're in a group and something funny happens or somebody tells a joke, people tend to be laughing while looking at the person they like most. I also want to apologize in advance if you do this and you notice that nobody's making eye contact with you. This last one helped me out a lot when I worked in customer service. If somebody is yelling at you or being a dick, just be like, um, excuse me, you have a little, uh, you have a little something in your teeth. This makes them feel very self-conscious and it stops them in their tracks every time. If you guys like this, I'll do a part two. Part two of psychology tricks that I know work because I use them. You know how a joke ceases to be funny the more you have to repeat it? You can actually use this to your advantage. Let's say you're in a group, somebody's making fun of you and you don't like it. Just be like, what? And they'll repeat it and be like, I'm so sorry. What'd you say? I didn't hear that. And they'll say it again. By the third or fourth time, nobody's going to be laughing at their joke anymore. If you're at a house party and you got a drink in your hand, don't hold it up here by your chest. Try to hold it more down towards your hip. This will make you seem more open and confident and people will be more willing to come up and talk to you. I am a very awkward person and I've been making embarrassing videos of myself online for a very long time. So I unfortunately have to remind myself of this a lot. If you're ever cringing at something embarrassing you did years ago, stop yourself and try to remember something humiliating that somebody else did. You probably can't. So this more than likely means that nobody remembers that one time in junior year where you unironically pronounced the word memes instead of memes. If you guys still like this, I'll do a part three. Psychology tricks that I know work because I use them, part three. If you look or stare at somebody's lips in conversation, it's going to make them think that you're interested in them. But if you look at their forehead, it's gonna make them feel really intimidated and really uneasy. Please use these wisely. Don't go around making people feel weird for no reason. So. I'm not saying that it's okay to lie, because it's not. But if you ever need somebody to believe a lie that you're trying to tell them, go ahead and slip in an embarrassing detail about yourself. This will work every time, as long as you say it with confidence and the lie is believable in the first place. This last one I use in customer service all the time. If you made a mistake or something's taking a really long time, do not apologize or say, I'm sorry to the customer. Instead, thank them and say something along the lines of like, thank you for your patience. This takes the focus off the air that happened and then puts praise on them for even having to put up with you, which usually puts them in a better mood than just saying, I'm sorry. Part four coming soon. I am completely out of flannels, but I still wanted to make part four of psychology facts that I know work because I use them. If you're walking and you're in a hurry, just stare straight ahead at where you're going. People will get out of your way. I use this trick when I'm riding around campus on my Heelys. I just stare straight ahead, not making eye contact with anybody, and it works. If you're in the middle of a conversation with somebody and you hand them something, they're gonna take it. And it's super funny because they don't realize it. Same with the other way. If they have something in their hand and you stick out your hand, they're gonna give it to you and not know why. <laughs> Smiling can literally change your life. Smile at the bartender, you're gonna get a drink faster. Smile at your coworker, they're more likely gonna take that shift trade request. Smile at your kids, they're gonna feel loved. Smile at your partner, they're gonna wonder what they did to make you so happy. Smile at me, I'm gonna smile back. Smile at everyone you meet, fuck. Smile in the mirror sometimes and you're gonna feel better. By the way, it blows my mind how many of you guys enjoy these videos. So I mean, as long as you guys keep watching and keep liking them, I'm gonna keep making them. Psychology tricks on how to get your crush to like you back. I also know these work because I use them. Make sure you're around your crush a lot. This is how I got my middle school crush to be my high school girlfriend. I made sure we had all the same classes together. I sat next to her on the bus. I even started playing basketball because she was on the team, you guys. Think about it. Somebody's gonna like you more if they're around you versus if they never see you. Wear the color red more, or you know, just have the color red on you at all times. Drive a red car if you have to, man, I don't know. Researchers aren't too sure why this one works, but it does build the traction, so try it out. Make your crush known to them, you guys. Do not keep your feelings a secret. This is the worst possible thing you can do. It's a lot harder than it sounds, but it works. Trust me. I had an ex tell me that she didn't even consider having feelings for me until I told her that I liked her. And then we ended up dating for five years, so it works, you guys, I promise. I got, like, a lot more of these, so if you guys like this, I'll do another video. And yes, I am wearing Heelys. 
psychology tricks that I know work because I use them part six. If you're ever nervous about something, chew gum. It'll trick your brain into thinking you're relaxed because we're wired to think that we're safe while we're eating. Don't chew gum in the middle of an interview, an audition, or like a date or something, but use it beforehand to calm your nerves. You can tell a lot about somebody by their feet. If you're in the middle of a conversation with somebody and they're facing you, congratulations, they wanna be there. But if they're turned away, like they're, they're not, their feet aren't facing you, they wanna leave, they want this conversation to end right now. Stop letting people interrupt you. It's making you seem weak. Your words matter. So if somebody tries to interrupt you, don't stop talking. Don't even like try to talk louder. Talk in the same pace, volume, and tone that you were before. They're gonna feel awkward and shut the fuck up. Hold out your hand, flip it around like this, and then touch your pinky to your thumb. Check if you have that muscle right there called the palmaris longus. If you're missing it, then congratulations. You're part of the 14% of the population that is just more evolved than the rest of us. Psychology tricks to fuck with somebody's mind that I may or may not use. You'll never know. Walk up to a group of your friends and if there's like five of them, be like, hey, if it isn't my four favorite people and watch their faces be really confused, they try to figure it out. And if somebody tries to correct you, it's even funnier because they'll be like, hey, no, no, there's five of us here. Be like, hey, if it isn't my three favorite people. This one's really mean, but if you're ever in an argument with somebody, be like, you know, everything they say about you is true and then walk away. This one also works really well in an argument or if you're being bullied. Give the person that's yelling at you a sincere compliment. This will completely throw off the entire dynamic and throw down their guard because it's really hard to be mean at somebody that's like being really nice to you. Really weird human body facts that I can guarantee you didn't know. This one depends on you a little bit, but the average human body has enough fat in it to make over seven bars of soap. If you lose your hand and then get it reattached, even if all mobility and feeling comes back, no matter what you do, the skin on that hand will never get wrinkly in water ever again. It just loses that ability. Us women are actually programmed to forget the pain of childbirth a few months after it happens. This is why we continue to have kids. We're like, oh my God, that was traumatic and so painful. I never want to do that again. And our body's like, nah, forget about it. Did you know that your birth month actually has a huge effect on who you are as a person and the things that could possibly happen to you? Like a ton of research has gone into this. People born in January. Hi, um, you are statistically more likely to have Alzheimer's, Crohn's disease, and epilepsy. We're taking a huge turn with this one, but people born in February, you are more likely to become an artist. People born in March are way more likely to have asthma. And I can actually speak to this one because my little sister, the only one born in March, has asthma. Where are my fellow April babies at? Okay, we are way more likely to become alcoholics than everybody else. So back in November, I made a couple of videos kind of making fun of my little brother Cruz for not knowing that I'm gay. And he would ask like, why I don't have a boyfriend and why I wear boy clothes. And the videos got kind of popular. And he recently figured it out. So I thought I would reenact how that happened for you guys. Hey, Jayus. Yeah. Is your girlfriend also 21? No, she's still 20. She'll be 21 in September though. You have a girlfriend? <laughs> yeah. You're gay? <laughs> Maxim, did you know? Mm-hmm. Do you kiss her? What? <laughs> so, the smarter you get, the more you actually start to doubt yourself. It's called the Dunning-Kruger effect, and this is the exact reason why the dumbest people are always the most confident. Sarcasm has been proven to strengthen the right side of your mind, responsible for controlling creative thoughts. It's also a sign of a healthy and intelligent mind. Your brain has a specific area entirely dedicated to recognizing human faces. That's why all animals of certain species look virtually identical to us, but we're able to distinguish between some pretty similar looking people. And if you damage this part of your brain, it actually can lead to something called face blindness, which is exactly how it sounds. Did you know that your birth month can actually have an effect on which career path you choose? May hey babies, you guys are intelligent and logical. Most of the time, which means that you want a job that requires a lot of management skills. The most popular for your month are politicians, scientists, and business people. People born in June are the visionaries. They're imaginative and creative, and they want to make the world around them a better place, which is why you guys have the most CEOs and Nobel Prize winners. People born in July, while intelligent, tend to work better with their hands, which is why the most common career choices for you guys are bricklayers, train conductors, and artists. August babies thrive in environments where they're moving fast and working hard, which is why you guys also ranked really high in bricklayers, but also president of the United States. And I ran out of time again, so be sure to like and follow for a part three and let me know when's your birthday and what do you want to be when you grow up?
This is the uh, the drunk hotel version of weird human body facts that I can guarantee you didn't know. Everyone, and I mean everyone, has a unique smell, except for identical twins. They smell the same. You'll actually die sooner from lack of sleep than you will starvation. So my fellow insomniacs out there, take some melatonin, get some sleep. Your body gives off so much heat that in about 30 minutes, you'd be able to boil half a gallon of water. You're fucking hot. You thought I was going to do it. You thought I was going to cut my hair. That's short too. Oh, you're fucking crazy. Why on earth would I cut my hair? I did it. <laughs> Worked. Things that are way older than you probably expected. Well, the rings around Saturn are estimated to be between 10 and 100 million years old. But sharks are about 450 million years old. That means that sharks as a species is older than shit in space. SPACE! The electric car was invented in 1884, a year before the gas car. By the 1920s, we started building better roads, so people started driving further than the electric car could, and we discovered a bunch of big oil reserves, so gas cars just took over. Oreos were invented in 1912. Not too crazy to think about on its own, but sliced bread was invented in 1928, and chocolate chip cookies didn't come out till the 1930s. Things I can't prove are true, but like deep down, I know they are. Most flat earthers don't actually think the earth is flat. They're just doing it for attention. The line on detergent caps is actually way higher than how much you should use to wash your laundry because they want you to use more detergent. It's so easy for them to get away with. The Hawaii nuke false alarm thing that happened a few years ago that they said was an accident was actually the United States government testing to see how the general population would react in a nuclear war. Surprise, we panicked. I am so close to 500k on YouTube. So close. Not so fun facts to completely ruin your day. Koala bears are probably going to go extinct soon, considering that 90% of them have chlamydia, and they have chlamydia because they eat each other's shit. The average adult has about 10 pounds of organisms living in and on you that are considered not you. There is no guarantee that the universe just won't end in five seconds. I guess we're safe for now. Really weird human body facts that I can guarantee you didn't know. Your hair actually grows faster if you're anticipating sex. Your brain has the consistency of soft butter. Because of the elasticity of your skin, it would actually take three full rotations to remove a human head. You want to know what keeps me up at night? A lot of things, but do you guys remember old TVs? Whenever you would touch them, they have like a weird feeling. It was like fuzzy and staticky. New TVs don't have that. There's nothing here. I'm not experiencing any sensations. I don't... Where are you? That means that one day that feeling's just gonna be gone. Like that feeling you got when I mentioned old TV, fuzzy static feeling, people aren't gonna have that. They're not gonna know what the fuck we're talking about. We're gonna be so old and I'm scared and this doesn't make any sense. Do you wanna give off psychopath vibes? <gasps> be sure to never leave your house without your public toothbrush. Just take it with you wherever you go and just brush your teeth in the middle of the conversation. Just start bursting out laughing about something funny you thought of. <laughs> when someone's like, dude, what's so funny? You just gotta start like laughing even harder at your own joke and it's so fucking funny. <laughs> Whenever you have to wait in line, just start jogging in place. You're not hurting anybody, you're just passing the time, but people are gonna want to stay the fuck away from you. What inattentive ADHD looks like versus what it feels like. You should get some work There's done. There's so much to do. Uh, if you do it, you will feel better. It's just gonna take so long. Just get up off the couch. Get up. Get up, get, get up, up, get, get up, up, get up. I hate you. Do it. You suck. Stop procrastinating. You're so lazy. You're so bad at being an adult. Your life is falling apart. Oh. I wanna dance with somebody. Wanna feel the heat with somebody. Yeah. I what wanna dance I with somebody. If you ever make a joke and like nobody laughs and you wanna save yourself from that embarrassment, just be like, wait, you haven't seen that TikTok? Oh, okay. If you ever start to feel bad about not reaching out to a friend in like a really long time, just remember that they haven't reached out to you either. If somebody ever says something inappropriate, don't do that like nervous laugh thing because they're gonna think it's okay and keep doing it. Instead, be like, I don't get it. They're gonna be like, oh, it's a joke. Be like, oh, okay, explain it to me. Then you get to watch them struggle to figure out why their inappropriate joke is so funny. Unless they say it's from TikTok. 
Sometimes in movies when dogs have to look very mean and threatening, they actually have to redo their tails with CGI because they won't stop wagging because they're doing such a good job acting. When bees run into each other, they actually make like a little whoop sound. Fish are actually able to recognize their owners. There's this weird misconception with people that they think that fish can't see out of the glass of their aquarium, but they actually have surprisingly good eyesight. The reason some cats don't like dogs is because dogs are really unpredictable and they move too abruptly and it actually breaks the cat's inner algorithm. Cats like being in boxes because it makes them feel safe. They're covered on all sides and they think that you can't see them, but they can see you. Cats don't think of the person who feeds them as their master. They're just the feeder. If you want your cat to think of you as a master, you actually have to train it. And cats can be trained, but the problem is that humans can be trained even better and the cat usually wins. So if your dog's ever barking and you want them to stop, don't just yell at them and say no because they're actually gonna think that you're barking with them. Instead, try to do one big loud clap. Whenever your dog puts their paw on you, that's actually their way of petting you. So I've talked about how dogs can't feel guilt, but they can actually experience jealousy. And it happens whenever like you're rewarding or like giving a lot of attention to another dog and not like giving it to them. So if you don't already know, I actually have a YouTube channel. My newest video is, is time travel real? I'm gonna post again soon. If you wanna check it out, it's linked in my bio. Thankfully, caterpillars are unable to burp, but could you imagine if they could? That wonderful scent you smell when cutting grass is actually a chemical distress signal. You're sniffing the silent screams of your own lawn. If a child is given birth to underwater, it can live the rest of its life underwater. Did I ever tell you that I'm gay? What? I'm gay. You're, you're, you're telling me that you're a homosexual? Yeah, dude. <coughs> That's so disgusting. Are you being serious right now? Yeah. So fun facts to ruin your day. New bathroom. Weird. Deforestation of the Amazon is up 55% since quarantine started. Only one out of every thousand sea turtles ever makes it to adulthood. The most common last words of somebody dying is, something doesn't feel right. Something's wrong. Mr. Stark, I don't feel so good. Guys, I just moved into a new apartment, so if you guys want a house tour, I could do a house tour. You just gotta let me know. You know? Like, let me know! Really weird human body facts that I can guarantee you didn't know. Cortisol is a stress hormone that is only released through sweat and tears. So if you're like really stressed out, working out and crying can actually make you feel better. But if you're not doing either of those things, that hormone will actually get turned into fat cells. It's extremely common for people to have the urge to poop just before having a heart attack. When you die, one of the last senses to go is actually your hearing. So just imagine, right after you pass, your entire family is just talking shit about you. I'm talking. So when I was two, my dad bought one of his first cell phones and I decided to put it in the microwave, but he tells the story a little bit better. So I'm over there folding yeah, clothes calm down. and I'm folding clothes and Bella comes up to me and she's like, Dada, hot, hot. And it's like, yeah, yeah, okay, hold on. And I'm still folding clothes and she's like being very persistent, pulling on my shirts. Dada, hot, Dada, hot, hot. It's like, yeah, hold on. I got like, you know, 30 more seconds. I'm done with the clothes. Anyway, I sort of brush her off again, and then she's like, pulling on my shirt, she's like, Dada, phone hot, Dada. And I think, phone hot, and then I smelt something. As I walk into the kitchen, I see flames shooting out of the microwave. I turned it off, and look, and there's flames. I got the flames out, couldn't tell what it was, and I got a spatula, flipped it over, and see my phone, and thought, phone hot, Dada. <laughs> So there's actually some scientific backing that says that the month you're born in actually has a huge effect on who you become as a person. And this is season two, part three of what that means. So for some reason, studies have shown that people born in September actually take longer to reach sexual climax compared to everybody else. October babies, you guys were born in like the spooky month, okay? You got vampires, witches, skeletons. Speaking of which, you guys are more likely to develop osteoporosis. November children, how does it feel knowing that Valentine's Day was probably the day that your parents spent some time making you? Haha, <laughs> that's probably why you all become serial killers, huh? December, where's all my left-handed dentists at? Yeah, um, you guys bruise easier? You might want to get that checked out by a doctor or something. Ah, uh, I haven't done this in a while. Psychology tricks to fuck with someone's mind that I may or may not use. You'll never know. 
This one's a little fucked up, but that's kind of the spirit of the series. If you ever see a couple, smile at the opposite gender like you know them and give them a little flirty, hey. You can even throw in a look at their partner and then just walk away. They will be guaranteed to have a very interesting conversation later. If you're ever having a conversation with somebody where you're both standing, take a tiny step forward. Get in their personal space a little bit. They're gonna be forced to take a tiny step back. That's when you take another tiny step forward. If the conversation lasts a while, you can probably get them all the way across the room. If someone you're talking to is being racist, sexist, or just gossiping and you don't really like it, pretend not to know what they're talking about. Just be wide-eyed and innocent and ask them questions like, what do you mean? They're gonna be forced to explain their fucked up thought process until they get really uncomfortable and stop. You ever go to eat something sweet and you get that weird tingling feeling down your jaw? Did you ever wonder what that was? Well, I did and I finally looked it up. So you see that gland right there? That produces all your spit. So whenever you eat something really sweet, sour, or if you just haven't eaten anything in a while, that gland's like, holy fucking shit, it's happening. Oh my God, they need spit, we need flavor, <gasps> places. And it basically just kicks everything into overdrive causing you to say, ah, my jaw hurts. There's a lot of misinformation literally everywhere, so I'm here to clear some things up for you guys. All that extra air in your chip bag isn't just chip companies saying fuck you. The air protects the chips from breaking and a lot of it's nitrogen to keep it from going stale. Dinosaurs aren't extinct. There is zero genetic reason not to classify birds as dinosaurs because that's what they are. Birds are dinosaurs. You know, man, we only use like 10% of our brains and you know Einstein, man? He probably used like 12%. Shut the fuck up, that is so wrong. We use all of our brain, we just use different parts at different times. And it's actually pretty common to use 100% of your brain at the same time. It's called having a fucking seizure. Psychology tricks that I know work because I use them. If you ask someone a question immediately before playing rock, paper, scissors, they're more than likely gonna pick scissors. Hey babe, what color is your shirt? Yellow. Rock, paper, scissors. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. <laughs> Giving people a small gift can drastically change their disposition towards you. You can make people that don't really like you all that much like you by just buying them a drink, a candy, or you know, buying them burritos with your David Dobrik Chipotle card. If you ever notice you're procrastinating and you just know that you need to get started on shit but you just don't feel like it, try narrating your life in the third person. Guaranteed you'll start getting shit done after 30 seconds of- And Bella continues to avoid her YouTube video. She sits back down on the couch to watch an episode of Friends that she's seen a million times as she eats her third helping of gold, but fuck, I gotta do it. Most people get uncomfortable if their TV or radio volume aren't divisible by two or five. People who speak two or more languages subconsciously change their entire personality when they switch from one another. Also, if you're bilingual, I got a question for you. What language do you think in? For some reason, it's really hard for our brain to just make up other human faces, so the strangers that you see in your dreams are people that you've seen in real life. Psychology tricks to fuck with people's minds that I may or may not use. You'll never know. Pull out a pack of gum, offer the person you're talking to a piece, and then put it back without taking any for yourself. That person, if they're observant, is gonna have a lot of questions. So a friend actually did this one to me once and it fucked my whole day up. If you're ever having a conversation with somebody, just stop, look them dead in the eye, and go, wake up. And then just immediately go back to the conversation like nothing ever happened. If somebody on the road is driving like an asshole, your first reaction is probably gonna be to flip them off. But stop, you can do this better. Instead, give them a thumbs down. It hurts just a little bit more. Please use these wisely. Psychology tricks to fuck with somebody's head that I may or may not use. You'll never know. When ordering at a place like Starbucks or anywhere else where they ask for your name for the order, always look at the cashier's name tag and respond with that, regardless of gender. They're gonna give you a confused look and you have to just remain serious about it. It's funny every single time. Be polite and hold the door open for somebody, but this time, make sure they're at like an awkward distance away, like 30 or 40 feet, and just hold the door open for them and just be happy about it. They're gonna say thank you, but they're gonna be very uncomfortable. 
You've been in a coma for the last two years. We're sending messages any way that we can. Your family misses you. Wake up. Use Bing as a verb in place of Google, so instead of saying, hey, Google it, say, hey, Bing it, and watch all your friends and family disappear around you. Really weird human body facts that I can guarantee you didn't know. Your immune system doesn't actually know that your eyes exist, so this means that if you ever get an eye injury or an infection near your eyes, there's a chance that your immune system's gonna treat it like a foreign body and you could go blind. Some people, if they put something in one or both of their ears, will cough. It's called the Arnold cough reflex and it only affects a very small percentage of people. It's time to stop. <laughs> Just kidding. Did you know that you have enough potassium in your body to create a small bomb? Wanna know how to tell if somebody has a crush on you? There's usually a lot of subtle signs in somebody's body language, and if you know what to look for, they're like dead giveaways. Like, if somebody really likes you, they're gonna unconsciously copy your mannerisms. Use that to your advantage. You might also catch this person looking at you. A lot. Like, a lot, a lot. And if somebody likes you, they're gonna be laughing at everything you say, and I can promise you, you're not that funny. But they think you are, so like... People also really like to be in close proximity with the people that they like, so if somebody has a crush on you, they're gonna try and be around you all the fucking time. And if they have open body language and their feet are facing you in a conversation, oh, ah, they fucking like you, bro. And I mean bro in like the most gender neutral way. Don't flip out. And honestly, if you're asking yourself if somebody likes you, you probably already know it in your gut. Like you either have that vibe that somebody's drawn to you or you don't. Psychology tricks to fuck with somebody's mind that I may or may not use. You'll never know. Tell someone we need to talk and really get that anxiety built up inside of them and then go as long as you can without actually seeing them to talk. And when you finally do see them and they ask about it, be like, you know what? Doesn't even matter anymore. And then give them a pat on the back, fake smile and walk away. When someone calls you, answer the phone and be like, hi, I'd like to speak to Alex. And then for some reason, the person on the other line is gonna get confused and think that you called them and be like, oh, sorry, you called the wrong number and then hang up on you. And in a few seconds, they're gonna go fucking insane. If you really want to be a cunt, whenever you're eating with somebody, whether it's at lunch or a dinner party or something, ask them a question right when they put food in their mouth. They're going to do the awkward, like, obligatory, chew fast, point at their mouth, nervous laugh thing, and it's super funny every single time. And you can, like, take it a step further, get other people to get on it with you. Everybody's just asking this one person questions as soon as they're just taking mouthfuls of food. Ah! Really weird human body facts that I can guarantee you didn't know. Humans actually have way more than five senses. And I'm not talking about that sixth sense type of thing, okay? I'm talking about the sense of balance, the sense of space, the sense of temperature in and around our body, the sense of time, and the sense of pain. <laughs> Natural redheads require more anesthesia than the rest of us due to a weird mutation in one of their receptors. And if they don't, they're more likely going to wake up in the middle of their surgery and feel everything. Your mouth and anus are both continuous with an external environment, so technically from an anatomical standpoint, humans are donut shaped. Psychology tricks that I know work because I use them. Part 13. If you're ever looking for an object that somebody hid from you in like a room, just shout, I found it! They're more likely just gonna look in the direction that they hid it and then you can find it. If you're ever having trouble deciding between two things, flip a coin to make your decision. But the trick is, is while it's in the air, you already know the outcome that you want, so just go with that regardless of what the coin says. Acting as if you don't expect to get ID'd gets you ID'd a lot less. Same goes with getting stopped by security or police. Obviously, that doesn't work all the time, but if you're walking with confidence and purpose, whether it's faked or genuine, people don't tend to stop you. You guys really wanted a part two, so here it is, what your birth month actually means about you. May babies, I am so sorry, but you are more susceptible to diabetes and glaucoma. People born in June have the highest number of CEOs and Nobel Prize winners, but you're probably gonna need glasses. People born in July tend to have the most optimistic outlook on life compared to those who are born in colder months. August kids tend to really struggle in school and they're 30% more likely to be labeled as the problem student by their teachers. If you have a daily routine, your dog can actually tell what time you're coming home based on how much of your scent is left lingering around the house. Dogs don't feel guilt. If they like tear up your couch or get into the garbage, they're not sorry that they did it, they're just sorry they got caught. While dogs can't understand up to 150 words and phrases, they're mostly going off just the sound of your voice. If you ever saw the TikTok video of that one guy talking to his dog and he's like, I fucking love you, and the dog's getting all sad, and then he goes to the dog and he's like, I'm gonna fucking murder you, and the dog's all happy, that, that proves it. Seeing somebody that you're in love with with their hair wet should make you more attracted to them. Convincing yourself that you slept well, even if you didn't, will actually trick your brain into thinking you did, and you'll feel better throughout your day.
But the opposite is also true. If you go all day like, oh, I'm so tired. Like, I didn't sleep that good. You're going to feel horrible. Falling in love has the same neurological effect on the brain as getting high on cocaine. Psychology tricks to fuck with someone's mind that I may or may not use. You'll never know. People naturally like to mimic each other and you can actually use this to your advantage. And if you ever want to see if somebody's checking you out in public, just fake a yawn. And whoever yawns is watching you. Unless they're a psychopath. If you're ever playing a game against somebody like basketball or beer pong and you want to throw them off just a little bit, ask them, hey, like you're doing really good, but do you breathe in or out when you shoot? Tell someone that they say a very simple word wrong, even if they don't. They're going to be adamant saying, no, I don't say that wrong. And you got to stick to it. Be like, no, you say it a little funny. It's going to slowly drive them insane. And all day they're going to be like, shampoo, 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 shampoo. Cat hierarchy is simple. Whoever is placed higher is in charge. So if your cat's house is above your bed, they think they're in charge of you. If your cat's ever looking at you and then slowly closes their eyes while still making eye contact, that's their way of giving you a kiss. And if you do it back, they might just do it again. Believe it or not, but cats actually evolved the meow to communicate with us humans and they don't use it with other groups of cats. And if they emphasize the O in meow, that means that something's urgent, they want something from you. If they emphasize the E, it's more pleasant, kind of like a greeting.